Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's so good to have you back again for this part two. Thank you. Just before you continue with your story, there's a couple of things I would like to ask you. And the first being, to give a little context, this is being recorded in October 2015. So it probably go on YouTube just to give the context. There's been a lot in media recently about CERN. And I would like to ask your opinion on CERN and the fact that they have the Shiva destroyer god destroyer god in their grounds. Uh huh. Um you want me to share more about uh, the Shiva temples back home? Yes, and just really what you feel, what, what do you feel about Sam having the, the Shiva idol in their grounds? Um, you mentioned to me you felt that it was quite ironic that atheist scientists um, would have such a, a Shiva idol there, and you mentioned about their dance. Uh huh, yeah, I, um, I it's, uh, you know, I'll also share a little bit about um, the snake um, that is wrapped around the Shiva god, you know, the temples uh, and the temples, the idols that they have. There is a, it's basically that you have to um, pray and, you know, idolize the snake. The snake is also a major part of um, temples in uh, Shiva um, temples. And I also shared about the shivling that is the linga. Linga uh, means the male uh, private part and um, that is the male private part. It's erected at a 90 degree angle and that is how it's made, you know, from mud and they um, pray to that idol of um, the male private part. And um, I also uh, did a little bit of more research when I came out of it and um, I haven't experienced drinking that milk uh, from the temple that I went to, but uh, there are some specific temples I heard um, that they wash uh, the idol with milk, and then that milk is collected. So um, the milk is collected and given away in little cups as prasada. Prasada basically means that you are um, letting people uh, drink the holy um, prasad. It, it's considered holy. You know, like we have the flesh of the Lord Jesus and the blood of uh, the Lamb, you know, that we take. We take at it as his body is the reminiscence. So everything that Lord planned initially, Satan has copied it. He's cloned it very well. He's, he's trying to deceive the masses. He's doing a good job at it, honestly. So people take that milk and get into a temple or a Sikh temple back home. Um, you are given prasada. That is the holy food that you eat and it makes you, you know, more holier. So um, that is what, um, you know, I also wanted to share with your listeners that um, that milk is collected. I mean, just the thought of it, you know, uh, scares me that people are washing that idol with the pure milk and then 
they are collecting it and then sharing it as a drink. You know, they are drinking it because now it has become very holy because it has touched the idol. And it takes me back to, you know, the times of Moses. It's exactly the same thing. We are doing the same thing. There are little idols of um, bulls and calves over there in the temples. Those are also washed. So, you know, I mean, I'm able to see it now. Earlier I did the same thing. You know, I'm not, say, not saying that, you know, um, I'm the only one who knows everything and, you know, you got to listen to me. I am just saying that I was a sinner. <laughs> I was blind. And I'm just redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, you know. That is what I just wanted your listeners to share with them. You know, um, even the people who are Hindus or Sikhs, you listen to this, please don't think that I'm the know-it-all and I know everything and I'm trying to tell you how to fix the problems in your life. I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to tell you that this is one of the very strong commandment of the Lord in Old Testament. We are not supposed to have any idols. And Hinduism has done majority of it. I, I, I honestly feel that, you know, so. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Nidhi. Um, when I share my story, I really hope it doesn't sound arrogant or patronizing because I simply share my story because I know the, the hell that I went through um, and I don't like to see others going through that and, and we just want to gently and humbly warn people and ask them to listen to our story um, and, and consider, you know, that, it's, that it could be true. If, if they just consider it, it would be wonderful. It's not that we're trying to be judgmental or preach. Mm -hmm down at them, so oh, I, I agree, I agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the second thing I wanted to share with you, Needy, I was telling a Facebook friend about your testimony, and he yeah. is... Uh, uh, One second, uh, Laura, can may I please add about the avatar a little bit, if you don't mind, uh, yes, in please, response to my please. Shiva uh, thing also? Sure. Uh, many people may have, okay, thank you. Many people may have watched the movie Avatar and um, uh, the, the, the figure, um, the, the figure in the movie Avatar is a blue colored um, figure and that is the exact idol that you will see in Shiva temples in India. The, um, it is colored blue and um, the Shiva um, God is exactly looks like him. The word avatar in Hindi is avatar, and avatar basically means messenger of God. And they call Shiva the avatar of God. And, and I'm amazed as to how in the West we have a movie about him and the figure looks exactly like the Shiva God. And, you know, it's, it's deception because, you know, people are, people here um, don't have any idea that this is a demon god from India. And they want, you know, so, I mean, I just, I'm just trying to, you know, make people understand that these rituals would not save us, you know, only Jesus can. Yes, and I, I agree with you that a lot of what comes from Hollywood movies and the music industry mm -hmm. A lot of it does have spiritual undertones or else quite blatant spiritual um, propaganda and, and really whether it's Hinduism, Buddhism, New Age, Neo New Age, occult, mm -hmm. really all of it is um, basically just a, a tool of the enemy to keep people away from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you see, like, the basic thing is, if you read Genesis, um, the, you know, the first book, uh, the enemy said, ye shall be like gods. You know, God is not letting you eat that fruit because he knows that you will be like gods. The essence of every false religion in the world is, you will become gods. You know, so there, the false religion was created at that time when Eve fell, that was the time when religion created. Because all these false religion, the new age stuff is all about me. You know, glorify myself. I, it's all about me. 
yoga. It's all about me. I'm going to connect to the divine. You know, I'm going to become divine. It's all about me. You know. And, and even the, you know, what I would perhaps define as neo-new age is simply because a lot of it is um, things I used to study and believe in, but now there's like added elements going to it, but it's the same, really the same kind of a message whereby mm -hmm. either people can talk to dead people or spirits of ascended masters mm -hmm. or aliens or Pleiadians or, you know, intergalactic mm -hmm. beings, all sorts of aliens. But basically, you know, in my opinion, these are all demons the Bible talks about. And, and as I said, it's, it's really just to, to give people... Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, Hin Hinduism and Sikhism believe in believe that you um, you know there's such a strong comparison. You know, I mean, I I really pray that my Hindu and Sikh brothers and sisters are able to see the truth. You know, I mean, they say that uh, you eighty four thousand different births you take, and then you get the human birth. So you have to go through 84,000 cycles of being a living being. You could be a fish, you could become a snake, you could become a cow. After 84,000 species, you get a chance to be a human being. That totally takes away the importance of a human soul. Whereas the Bible says you were being fearfully and wonderfully made. I made you in your mother's womb beautifully. I think that, that the whole thing about reincarnation and karma as well, oftentimes it's explained, you know, if we didn't do very well in a previous life, we get another chance to come back and do better in a, in a future incarnation. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, it's like a false, a, a demonic counterfeit of the born-again experience because once you ask Jesus into your life, he cleanses you and washes away all your past sin there is no need to have all these incarnations um and i would say these, yes. these past life experiences are um visions granted by demons simply because i've known people that have been through that and they've had the demon cast out of them mm -hmm. and also, also yes and, and you know it, is, it will be more proved people you, you Lord is going to prove his point in your life if you if you believe in this, you know. The first thing is, you know, the belief. I mean, when you feel the snake moving in your stomach, if you have prayed to the Shiva God and it leaves your body and you yawn and your eyes are burning and the water leaves, Lord has proved his point, you know. He is the God of logic. He is logically proving his point with deliverance. He wants to set you free from those demon gods and bondages, you know. Because he has set me free, he can set anyone free, you know. Absolutely, and he set me free too. In, in, in the New Testament, Jesus and the disciples, one of the, the things they did was cast out demons, so we can still do it today. Amen. And Amen. Are set free Amen. And our bodies get healed too, because Jesus is good. Amen, yes. So the next thing um, I wanted to, to, to tell you, Nidhi, was a Facebook friend, he was a, he is an ex-Buddhist monk and Zen master, and he said he feels that Hinduism and Buddhism are very influential in attracting people into cult practices, and he says mm -hmm. at, at the time he didn't realise that when he lived in the Buddhist temple as a monk, a spirit of mm -hmm. Buddhism was leading him into meditation, transcendental, wow. transcendental meditation, and visualization techniques, which led him into astral projection and other things. He then says when he came to Jesus, he had exorcism, and some of the demons that were cast out to him were those strong Buddhist and Hindu demons. Mm -hmm. He says mm -hmm. it's, it's easy for people to assume it's just a normal part of society, but in his opinion, Buddhism and Hinduism are quite influential in attracting yes. people into the mm -hmm. into and the cult. Uh -huh. Go ahead, sorry. Yes, I, I just wanted your opinion on that. 
Yes, I completely agree with you, Laura, on that one also, uh, because I did try uh, Buddhism for some time, not very strongly, though, you know, not actually going to their temples and finding out. Um, but I completely agree with you. I did buy Buddha, uh, you know, idols of Buddha. And, um, you know, back home, like you can just, they're so easily available, all those idols of gods. And I was just looking for that to fill that emptiness. One of the major, um, you know, um, uh, comparison if we do is one of the major points where they both uh, feel and look like and look like same are point number one is idols. You know, they, Hinduism has many idols. You pray to them, you wash them, you clean them. Buddha also is an idol. You'll find the idols of Buddha now in American stores, in Europe. They're all over the world. And people keep them in their home for good luck. And that is one of the things that goes with Buddha idols. I have given away numerous myriad of uh, Buddha idols to my friends because we are just innocent and blind people. You know, we just want to we just want to do uh, something to please God. And you know, Bible says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. You know, so so I mean, we are being destroyed honestly by these demons. What actually it is, is I think every idol of Hinduism, Buddhism, every idol in the world has a demon behind it. That is what my theory is. And once you, you are actually, you know, giving money to the devil's bank, you are paying money in the devil's bank and he's going to come and get your money back. And those idols is one of the point I said. The second point again is, you know, Buddhists, um, many of my cousins are into Buddhism now. From Hinduism, they have changed to Buddhism. There is a lot of meditation that goes with Buddhism as you shared with your, about your Facebook friend, you know. So another point uh, in both the religions. You know, and again, you know, I, I will say it says, um, you know, as I did my research about Buddhism earlier, I was um, looking at their um, main thought process that they have is that you've got to lead a moral life. You have to be mindful of your thoughts and actions, and you have to develop a wisdom and understanding. So see, basic idea is the same coming from Hinduism, that is karma. The theory of your karma, that means your own good works are going to take you to heaven. Um, whereas the Bible says that your good works don't take you to heaven so that nobody boasts upon their good works. You just need a savior for we all have sinned and we have fallen short of the glory of God. So, you know, there's there's a major comparison right there um, in between Buddhism and Hinduism, I think. Yes, and um, I agree with you. I used to go to the Buddhist meditation center when I was a spiritualist and a new ager, mm -hmm. and I did the, mm -hmm. the Buddhist meditation, and as I say, when I came to mm -hmm. Jesus, that was one of the demons that got cast out of me, mm -hmm. and I agree with and you, you know, that, yeah. That uh -huh. the, and you know, they say that we don't worship idols, we are different than Hindus on that respect, but my question to them is, why is everywhere an idol of Buddha in a, those idols then? And they are facing towards Buddha idol when they are praying or meditating. Yeah. And I agree with you that the idols are cursed objects. Um, you know, the Bible mm -hmm. does say that, that such idols of, of gods that are made are, are cursed. And even by experience, I've come to know this simply because if I go to someone's house, if someone has asked me to come, and cleanse their house from demons because they've had, you know, demonic attack in the house, they've had demons attacking them. Um, often we find that, that there's objects in their house that are allowing the demons to stay there. And sometimes it's, uh -huh. it's these types of idols. And once the person throws these objects out, the, the curse is removed and the, the demons leave and, and um, stop attacking them. So yeah, I would mm -hmm. agree with you on that point as well. These things are, are cursed. Yeah. And you bought a Buddha statue and you were going to tell me, tell us something about what happened with this Buddha statue. Did something supernatural happen years ago? Uh-huh. 
Hello? Hello? Yeah, are you there? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah, sorry, I missed your last um, two lines, I think. I couldn't hear you clearly. Sorry. You, you, told oh, me, okay. you told me earlier that years ago you bought a Buddha statue and there was a supernatural experience with it. Um, yes, um, you know, I, um, I just, um, I, I brought a um, statue of Buddha, you know, and I, I did have a very, um, like, you know, I, I, I could feel that, you know, it was watching me as I was walking in my home. And, uh, uh, you know, so I, I just felt like it was the first time I got saved. And at that time, I used to think, oh, everything, you know, leads to heaven. So all these are just ways to lead us to heaven. And maybe I was not able to hear the Holy Spirit really clearly because I was not strong in the spirit that well. So I just kept all those idols with me along with the Bible and along with being a Christian. I, I still kept all those idols, but I could... I could feel something, you know, very, I felt very wounded, like, you know, the eyes and stuff like that. And eventually, I mean, I didn't have a really uh, big of a supernatural experience, like, you know, but about a month ago, you know, I had one of my friends here um, where I work. Um, she shared with me about how she gets excited about Buddha and she's trying Buddhism now. It's been a long time and she she had this Buddha statue for a long time at her home. She even clicked a picture of the statue and brought it to show it to me. And she said that whenever I look at it, it feels like it's opening its eyes and it smiles at me. So I felt led by the Lord to share the truth with her about how I came out of all this uh, darkness. And I shared with her that it's demonic and we are not supposed to have idols and this is all new age and this is a religion, you know, of a demonic God. Um, but I felt like, you know, I'm, I upset her or I offended her. And uh, within about 20 days, I heard that uh, she had a massive heart attack. Now, I just want to clarify this. I'm not saying that this could have happened because of the Buddha statue or, you know, you see, we, I'm, I'm not an expert on the spiritual realm, but um, at that time, I felt like she did not. And, you know, you just think about it. I mean, a Buddha statue looking at you, opening its eyes when you're at home alone, I mean, how does that feel to you? I mean, you know, just forget about her massive heart attack and, you know, all that. But just think about it. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, um, I think, I know what you mean. Sometimes these things could be purely coincidence, but sometimes mm -hmm. there is a, is a link. And the amount of people I've heard the last 20 years who, once they come to Jesus and throw out their false gods, they also have miraculous healings in their body. Amazing, yes, yes. amazing mm -hmm. physical healings in their body. Like the very same day, they throw out the the idols. So if these objects are cursed, it, you know, makes sense. It could affect a person's health. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and there are there are numerous testimonies of people. You know, like. I mean, my own example, you know, I mean, I was, I'll share with your listeners later on as to how sick I became. And, you know, with every deliverance session, I was more free. Amen. I mean, in body, mind, and soul, Amen. you know. Yes, so, I, I mean, see. there is definitely something, you know, we all want to look for evidence. This is the evidence, you know, my healing, your healing, you know, people's healing is the evidence, you know. Absolutely. And uh -huh. the, the third thing I wanted to mention, you had said to me earlier on, on Facebook, the thousands of gods within Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, and all the, the, the false gods in the world, in your opinion, are um, parts of the demonic legion. The Bible talks about, and you mentioned uh -huh. um, even the Nephilim and... Um, so I would have to agree with you there, simply because of the way these demons act at the name of Jesus Christ. Um, it's mm -hmm. pr pretty strong evidence that they're not true gods. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. I completely agree with you, you know, and and um, uh, the Bible uh, does talk about all this, you know, in the Old Testament. 
And uh, the thing is, you know, I mean, if you take a look at the gods, the pictures of the gods that you see, like the idols, uh, those people also look exactly like those idols, like the facial structures and things like that, you know. So even with, um, you know, with Jesus also, they have made up a, you know, an idol of Jesus, like in Catholicism. So I... I, I think it goes back to history, and there's there's deep. It's it's all deep, you know. It's it's not that um, you know shallow. I mean, the Bible is really deep. It actually explains you how these beings came up to be, and there were giants at that time. The Bible says, and so again, it talks about you know um, about Nephilim. It says that the same will be the days, the end times, as were the days of Noah. You know, so I think there was something with our uh, with our DNA that was. I mean, I, I'm not very um, very good with this, but I do. I've I've heard a lot of messages from Steve Quayle. He's really done his research in giants and stuff. So your listeners can check him out as well. Yes, it's really interesting. I don't know all in depth myself, but certainly, and I'm not awful sure about a lot of it. But I certainly believe that. Um, a lot of the, the things we've discussed are definitely demonic spirits, oh. for sure. Um, really, now, Nidhi, I'd love you to continue with your testimony. And the last time you got to the part where you said the salvation prayer and asked Jesus into your life. Okay, I will continue from there then, um, Laura, that... Um I do remember, yes, I shared with you about the first time I got saved, and this was in 2007. It was about three months that I came here. I used to go to the church with my friend, and but I'd never had this experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So this was the time when I was again depressed, and I was my husband was a little upset with me, so he took my daughter to the park outside and I was just so frustrated with myself that I just, um, you know, opened my computer and, you know, just uh, switched it on and tried to look for some prayers because I thought maybe just prayers are going to help me because nothing else is helping me. By this time, I did have all the all the Hindu and Sikh books that I had at home, you know, all the uh, cursed objects, all idols. I used to have a place for them um, in order to pay them respect every day. So I was, uh, you know, doing all these rituals. And, you know, it's funny that I used to put the pictures of Shiva God and all those in inside my Bible. I used to use them as bookmarks because till now I'm still blind. I used to think always, you know, lead us to God. So, okay, I'm trying Bible, but other ways are also leading us to the God. So I, I I read this prayer and I mean I did share yesterday that my whole in those that one minute completely changed me totally changed me I mean I I went outside to see what was so different why do I feel this different so I left my home I went outside and I saw the grass I saw the mountains around everything was shining bright I mean it was like you know I was Honestly, there was something that filled me inside. I mean, can you prove this with science? No, you can't. I mean, you know, can I? Can we actually physically see that how I was filled? No, I can't. But honestly telling you, I felt the change, you know. So I was excited and I had no clue when my husband came back because I was so joyful. Otherwise, you know, I would fight with him. I would yell at him and tell him, why he left, you know, without telling me. And it was an everyday fight, you know, to continue the marriage. So he came back, you know, and I just, my life again, I, I just I felt some supernatural experience and I, just after that prayer. So I continue going to the church and this warfare begins. And like I shared, yeah, so I... Um, once a person receives Jesus, I really want to, I wish I could change this, you know. Um, they. I wish every person who receives Jesus as their Lord and Savior get the knowledge or information or some information about spiritual warfare and deliverance. You know, I think it's, it's the most vital part of becoming a Christian. What happened with me was that it was all rosy pictures. It was all very nice. I got saved. Okay, I shared all this experience with my friend. 
what I did not know was that the enemy was watching me being saved and he was waiting for another chance now to hit me, you know. So it is very important for a new believer, whosoever becomes a new believer, to actually, that is why it's a new life, you're born again, because now the time is you've got to take that trash out, take that dark spirits out of you and be more free and be strong in the Lord, you know. So I went to the church and I, I never got this, um, you know, I, I, I didn't get this uh, fed to my soul and spirit, you can say. I mean, I was getting the milk. I used to read the Bible. But I feel that at least this warning given to the new believers that, that the enemy, not, as a, not to make them afraid, but to make them prepared that the enemy is going to come back, you know, he's going to, he's not going to leave you alone and he may come initially stronger so that, you know, you know how to fight. I didn't know how to fight. I didn't know that I needed deliverance. I didn't know that it was a spirit of depression. So I'm going to the church again, you know, and, and how I, I also believe that other ways are also the ways of God. So I used to go to the church. Nobody taught me about deliverance. There's I'm still, but I'm still the same, you know, I still have those depression, feelings of depression, I'm frustrated with my life, I still don't feel uh, complete, you know, at times, because when those demons flare up, you know, they are, they are still having the party time in you. Honestly, I believe that once you have the Holy Spirit, your demons don't leave, you got to have deliverance, you know, self-deliverance or a process of deliverance you got to go through. Exactly, I agree. Uh, I agree with you, Nidhi, because um, when people come to Jesus, uh, the demons uh -huh. don't just leave automatically, you know, no. um, they, yeah. they, they yeah. have to be cast out, and mm. if, if the, the church doesn't know, doesn't believe no, that, no, or they don't. doesn't and, cast uh -huh. out, the, I per the person's you. still stuck with the demons, so I totally agree with you, deliverance is uh, an essential part of the mm -hmm. growth, essential yeah, part. Uh -huh. yeah, that's the, I think that's the next step, you know. Uh, and there are many Christian friends that I have who who still believe, you know, that I'm at fault, that I'm wrong. But you know, because uh, many churches all over the world are teaching, oh no, you're saved, so you cannot be demonized. You cannot have a demon. You, you see, I just ask a question. I want to ask them a question. Why are so many Christians depressed? Why are so many psychotropic medicines. Um, if they are saved, then all demons have left them. Why do they feel depressed? Why are they, uh, you know, taking those, why are they suicidal? Then obviously if there is Holy Spirit, nothing else should touch them. But and that's also, not the case. Also, you why know? are so many Christians still got health problems or disabilities or, you know, mm -hmm. a myriad Amen. of illnesses? Because the Bible says... Um, Jesus and the disciples cast demons out and people's bodies were healed. And the amount of times, yeah, a Christian can go and get prayer for healing, but it's mm -hmm. the wrong kind of prayer. What they need is, is the deliverance prayer and then the illnesses leave. So mm -hmm. I totally, I totally I agree. agree with you. I'm, I'm so excited, Laura, that I find you, I found your ministry and your radio show because you actually believe in this. I mean, you know, it's... It's hardcore Christianity, that's what I feel. You know, I mean, I, I feel there are very few people now who believe in this. Yeah. Well, totally, um, and yet, I, I mean, I agree with you in a sense, it's hardcore Christianity, and yet the early church in the book of Acts um, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. that is how they operated. So, yeah, the, the world has went backwards, really, um, and needs a, a revival in, in true Christianity, uh -huh. not, not in religion. But in the love of Jesus and, and his, his uh, powers and miracles. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, you know, I mean, if you have a doubt, you know, like if people have a doubt about this, they can go home and try. If Even if they are believers, you just, you have been provided the authority in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is so powerful that you just have to speak that word and from your body you can command those demons out. I mean, you just go home and try self-deliverance. And if they... Then point, you still have the Holy Spirit, but the things are going to leave your body, mind and soul, and you'll be more free. It's not that you're, you'll not go to heaven because you didn't do self-deliverance. You'll still be... You're, you're a child of God, but you'll enjoy your life on this planet. 
more once you just my point. Definitely. That's what Jesus died to give us, not just salvation, but full healing and wholeness, body, soul and mind. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. I agree. So, so tell us more of, of your testimony. Uh-huh. So, in, you know, I'll just share that, you know, this was a process in my life. So, you know, I was like, my husband said, oh, you have been trying so many gods now. These days it's the Bible. So this has been about three months, you know, that I have the Bible. And he said, I mean, for, for many years, you know, he used to think, oh, you tried so much. You were born in a Sikh family. Now you tried so many Hindu gods. So the Bible is going to be something new you're going to try just like other things, and, and you're going to leave it, you know. But he always supported me on my, uh, you know, beliefs, and he, he didn't want to believe in it, but he always told me, okay, if you want to read the Bible, you want to go to the church, I'll always support you. He was not like, you know, the dominating husbands who would not let um, their wives read the Bible or, you know, just fight with them. So he said, okay, anything that gives you peace, I'll support you. So I thank Lord for that, that... I didn't have any problems, and the other thing was I was on, I honestly feel I was on the American soil where there is freedom, you know, um, nobody nobody judges you on what you believe in, so I could easily, you know, practice what I believed in, I, I could research, I could find out, and and uh, I honestly, I want to share this with the listeners that I, I owe a debt, you know, to the soil that has provided me the freedom I've learned by other people, you know. Um, so I think these countries have, have these countries have been a light about Jesus Christ to the world, you know, be it Europe, be it America. I think they are, they are the lighthouse of Jesus Christ. Still they are. That's what I feel. So I, I want to say thanks for that. You know, I want to take a chance to say a big thank you. So, um, you know, I was I was going through my, my times of, you know, uh, up and down and, you know, still having questions as to um, why why I'm like this, you know. Uh, I used to read the, the Bible uh, verse a lot that says, Seek and ye shall find it, knock and it shall be opened to you. So I used to, I had this starting to have this little relationship with the Holy Spirit being further along, but... Um, the depression and anxiety were becoming uh, bad. By this time, again, I was I was still blind. I had no idea about, um, you know, that these things are demonic and stuff like that. So I was continuing with my yoga and meditation. And I was even doing it more now because I was thinking maybe this depression that is becoming more and more, maybe it's going to ease out a little bit. Now, this I'm talking about is three years are happening in the same, um, you know, struggles of depression and anxiety. More yoga I do, you know, I used to feel those powers around me. I could actually feel um, the strange energy fields around me. I mean, I think Lord allowed me that I didn't see them really well uh, in the spiritual realm, but definitely now I know they were demons, you know, it's... It's the it's the energy field that that that's what they are, you know, basically. So I I uh, I was I was I used to wonder why I feel all this around me, and you know, it's an I didn't feel very good after doing yoga and after doing meditation. So these questions were, um, you know, the seeds were growing in my mind as to if it's not helping me, why am I doing it? But I kept on asking questions from the Lord. And my fights with my husband and my depression and my anxiety um, were increasing big time now. I mean, I was reaching the point of being on the bottom, honestly. Earlier I was depressed, but I was still pulling myself through all that. Now I'm reaching a time my second daughter was born and, you know, I was, I was on the peak of depression, you can say. Um, I used to feel like I would leave my home and, you know, just go outside. When I was outside, I felt like I should go somewhere else. It was such a strong, you know, spirit of depression that was just bullying me. I mean, they are bullies, you know. So I felt like crying the whole day. So ultimately, my husband, you know, felt that it's coming out of hand now. And he said that I needed some help, like from a doctor who could find out what's wrong with me. And by this time, I felt like, you know, even yoga is not helping me, so I stopped doing yoga because my depression was not easing out a bit, you know. 
and what happened in my body was also my my mind was upset my body also started becoming um uh, you know negative how what happened was i used to sit down and my whole body i used to feel like you know snakes crawling all over my body and this is i'm telling you 4 years ago this happened snakes crawling all over my body pins like somebody was um pricking me with needles and pins and the pain was excruciating i mean i used to take pain killers for my um for my pain and still it won't have won't go away the moment i i would stand up and walk it was a little, was a little better and i would it would come back again um i went to about two to three doctors to figure out what's going on with me they were not able to find out they did a couple of tests on me they found nothing they said they have no idea but in deep in my heart i felt that i was not having a relationship with the lord i was fighting with my husband there were many other things going on i was yelling i was um just Uh, my mind was just out of control at this time i was still keeping a secular job i was able to manage my job though but everything else was messed up so i mean every day was a new fight i mean i just wanted to just end it forever um i took different kinds of from the doctors nothing um was helping me i was so upset i used to lie down still snakes all over my body I used to stand I used to shower I used to sit in the shower cold hot I tried everything so that the snakes would stop and uh, it was just the rock bottom point of my life and one day I was at work and I just I simply said I said Lord I am just done with my life I am my physically I don't have any energy left to bear this pain I was in tears I said Lord I cannot take this pain anymore it's not going away with painkillers I am depressed I am sad I could actually feel that I was in a dark hole somewhere you know I had lost the holy spirit connection that I had earlier because I was still you know into hinduism hindu gods and you know still doing everything still gossiping you know even after knowing that lord hates it i was gossiping i was just trying to again fill that you know um fill that hole inside me that had maybe the holy spirit left because i was not walking or not listening not fighting the warfare so i was back to square one again i think i think need you know in my opinion um the holy spirit had not left you because he says he will never leave us nor forsake us but i think yeah, that because those demons were still there um the hindu the buddhist demons mm-hmm. um they were like a blockage mm-hmm. or a barrier um that yeah, was between that, you that's and that's a very good point laura i agree yeah, jesus was still there he still loved you but those demons were like a, a shadow between you and, and mm-hmm. his light was not getting through to you until you had mm-hmm. that that exorcism that um you eventually got mhm so what happened next uh, next happened was i i was in at work you know i just um, at work and i was in my room and i just um, it was my lunch time and i locked the door and i had a bible with me and i just i said lord if you are there it happened twice i I did this at home also I heard nothing I uh, okay I sorry I missed it I'm I'm missing the link I by this time I had my I I'm moving way too fast so I'll just go back a little bit to let you know that my husband by that time said that I needed psychiatric help about the bodily needles and pains he said we'll keep on showing to different doctors and we'll figure out what uh, I mean how this can stop because it was a nerve problem somebody said it's a nerve problem somebody said it's a vitamin deficiency they did blood tests on me they found nothing and i just used to even tell the doctors i said the snakes are moving all over my body you got to do something i mean you know these things are going to do something to me and they looked at me as if you know i was crazy but i was just honestly telling them what was going on i felt like felt like little ants were walking under my skin you know 
that is irritating, but the pain was also there with it, you know, like they were pricking me with needles, I felt like that also, and all over my body, my head, my body, everything. So, um, you know, by this time, my husband said that let's uh, figure out about depression because it's not stopping. So I think first you should get some depression and anxiety meds, maybe, uh, you know, because of that, maybe you'll feel better physically also. So I said, okay, you know, it looks like maybe now is the time that I'll get the medicines and maybe I'll feel better with that. Um, but every time I read the Bible, you know, I used to read the Bible also. Every time the verses, you know, came to me that he healed them, you know, he's the healer, he healed people, but never about the enemy, never about, you know, casting out demons. Still, I was blind about that. So I used to wonder in my mind that he heals people, you know, then why do I need the depression meds? Anyways, I go with, go with my husband. I go to the doctor and they said that looking at all your symptoms, you're very depressed, you're very sad, maybe your family is back home, you're missing them, you haven't visited them in a while. This suggested my husband to take me back home so that I don't miss my family too much, you know, things like that. And I take prescription meds and the doctor told me those prescription meds sometimes make your brain go very peaceful. You know, you'll feel very peaceful in your brain, so there could be times when you would enjoy sleeping. But I felt they were so strong, you know, those medicines that I slept for the whole day. Yeah. So I, I just, took the med can I, can I uh -huh. just interrupt, Nidhi, please? Sure, um, sure. Just to say, listeners might think these were psychiatric problems, but um, from my experience and many people that I know who have come through, these attacks from demons that's exactly what it can be like it can be like snakes and ants on the body and once the demons mm -hmm. are cast out all those symptoms go which kind of yeah. proves it's not a psychiatric problem and um, we really only have a few minutes left needy so could you perhaps jump to and tell us the bit where the demons were cast out you and the healing that you found from jesus when that yeah. happened Yes, sure. Uh -huh. By this time, you know, I had, um, um, sorry if I took a lot of time in explaining. Um, by this time, you know, I was just so done. I had taken medicines for two days and uh, I was just sleeping the whole day. So I was just, you know, in my own thoughts, you know, maybe my own true self that was buried under somewhere under the demons, maybe that came up and, you know, I thought that, what's going on with my life, you know, now I'm on these drugs, now I'm dependent on these drugs. So I don't know what happened to me, I got the power from where, but Lord told me to throw those um, drugs, you know, or I just said, I said, Lord, if you made me, if you are a God somewhere, this is what I'm saying in my room, I said, if you created me, you did not create me this depressed. If you created me, if you created Nidhi, you did not create me full of depression. You did not create me like this. Then what went wrong? What happened? If you are here, then you got to free me today. Otherwise, I'm going to end up my life. I don't care what happens to me already. I have gone through so much. I already don't want my life anymore. And that was the time when I felt I heard from him and he said, your problems are demons. He did not speak to me audibly. And I had never heard this word. I had never heard, I had no idea being in Hinduism and Sikhism that a devil existed. I said, you are demons. And he said, in my name, you can command this depression to get out of your life. And I said, really, Lord, is there something like this? I mean, he himself explained me everything. And I went ahead and I did my research and I was baffled. I was amazed at how much freedom he has given me, how many spirits I had, he's still freeing me. And I commanded the depression at that time. I was on my knees, I was in tears. I said, you got to show me where you are today, you know. So I think I had hit rock bottom at that time. And at that time, he shared with me and he let me see. I said, okay, Lord, whatever you say, if this is a demon, I don't know what demons are, but whatever you say, I'll do. You know, to my spirit, he said, he said, now, in my name, you believe in me? I said, I believe in you. You are the son of God. And I said, you died on the cross for my sins. Now I use my authority from heaven. And, you know, I mean, he didn't explain too much. 
this is what I'm saying after reading all this, you know, doing a lot of research that I have the authority. He just told me, now you have to command this depression to go. And the moment, my friends, I said that, he let me see a very dark, deep, colored cloud around me and a figure leaving my head and my body. Amen. Yes. And I just want to ask my friends, how does a person go from deep depression to full of joy in one single minute? <laughs> that is what I want to ask the scientists and, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the counselors of the world. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How does a person go from deeply depressed, ready to end his or her life, yeah. to totally full of joy and singing songs of Jesus? How does that happen in the world? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, you cannot. No. But I had any one single pill of depression after that since wow. four, four years from now. Awesome. That is absolutely awesome. It's wonderful to hear that. And um, obviously you, just the way the Holy Spirit told you to do the self-deliverance is awesome because most people, you know, they find a Christian to cast the demons out, but the Lord told you to mm -hmm. do it to yourself. And um, I love mm -hmm. that. It's wonderful. Um, we're just coming to oh. the end. And obviously you, okay. are, you had other demons cast out, you too, from Hinduism, Buddhism, Meditation, mm -hmm. yoga. generational curses. Also, I think we are yeah. cursed a lot because our ancestors have not believed in the true God. So I think there were a lot of generational curses. He healed my body completely. I mean, he's still healing me. I'm not saying I'm perfect, yeah. but honestly, telling you, those snakes, those pinches of needles, stopped completely. I was again on my knees after a week after that. Yeah. In pain me that one minute I was again baptized that depression demon left and I was again on my knees after a week because I couldn't bear the pain and I experienced this happened in my bathroom I was on my knees again I said Lord I'm taking painkillers I know you are there depression is gone when will this go that is what I asked him I said Lord I know your depression has gone I have I'm full of joy when will this pain go these needles go and I felt like he pulled out a snake out of my back, and I haven't felt any needles after that. Awesome. None, not even one, my friends. That's so Jesus like heals, he delivers. Yeah. Praise, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And all these snakes, of course, we're not saying these are animal spirits. They're demons, but they pretend to, they, they masquerade as snakes. And obviously mm -hmm. with the yoga, there's the kundalini snake demons yes. it, it makes yes. sense mm -hmm. um, for, for listeners if you want to contact needed to ask her anything you'll find her on Facebook under the name of Walking Miracles and it's, it's just been so good to, to, to hear your story um, it's, it's just wonderful and I'd really just love you to pray now Needed, please, for, for anyone, and, and you know yourself, you've got such a heart for Sikhs and Hindus and, and, and Buddhists and uh, those into yoga, meditation. Just really mm -hmm. just pray what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart now as, as okay. we end the show. Okay. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I lift up all my brothers and sisters in Christ and all those who are going to come to Christ, Heavenly Father. We both agree, Father, your word said that when two or three agree, then you are in the midst, Lord. Right now, I ask that you are here with us, and I pray and ask for deliverance and salvation of all those Hindus and Sikhs and Buddhists who are living in darkness, Lord, because you are the only way, Heavenly Father. Not that you're, you were egoistic, that you are saying that you are the only way, but because, Father, I have tasted you, I have enjoyed you, Father. You are on, the only way, Lord to heaven, Heavenly Father, that many Hindus and Sikhs will be touched, many Buddhists, many of my New Age American, um, European friends who are in uh, Philippines, everywhere, Father, this testimony is going to touch them and it's going to speak to them through you, Father, that not even Laura's radio show, not even me, they, we will not be glorified, Lord, but your holy name will be glorified because redemption is only through you, Heavenly Father. We thank you and we glorify you, Father, for all the Hindus that will come to Christ, all the Americans who are in New Age will come to Christ, Heavenly Father, all the people living in European Kingdom will come to Christ, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you.
thank you. We jump to you. We thank you for the blood, Heavenly Father, that has redeemed us. I thank you for my sister in Christ, Laura, Lord. And I thank you that you used me, Father, your dirty vessel, Heavenly Father. You polished me and used me to share my testimony today. In your holy name I pray. Amen. 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 And listeners, just in case anyone wonders what Nidhi meant when she said baptized by the Holy Spirit, she meant speaking in tongues. And when a Christian speaks in tongues, the power of the Holy Spirit floods through your yes. being. And often that's when any demons are cast out or any illnesses yes. are, are healed. So speaking in tongues is a wonderful gift um, of, of Jesus Amen. Christ. And really, I just want to thank you once again, Needy. It's, it's been so wonderful to hear your testimony. And I uh, really hope that, that many will take um, great encouragement from it. Thank you, Needy, for that beautiful and powerful prayer. Dear listeners, if you want to ask Jesus to become your saviour and God, Needy would now love to pray with you and say the salvation prayer for you. So please repeat this prayer along with her. Yes, thank you, Laura, for letting me do the honor. Thank um, you. My dear um, listeners, my friends, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, if you have reached that point of rock bottom, if you are there right now, then Jesus is waiting for you. He wants to come into your heart and change your life forever. I was there once where you are today and you're listening to this program and I hold my hands with you and let's go and knock at the doors of heaven and let's ask for the Holy Spirit to touch us right now. Um, repeat after me. Uh, my friends, I've always said this prayer whenever I um, hit rock bottom in my life and Jesus always showed up. So uh, say with me, my friends, um, Lord Jesus, I come before you just as I am. I am sorry for my sins. I repent for my sins. Please forgive me. In your name, I forgive all others for what they have done against me. I renounce Satan, the evil spirits, and all their works. Please come in, Jesus. Please become my Lord, my God. And I receive you right now in my heart, Jesus. I agree that you died on the cross for my sins, Lord, and I make you my Savior, Lord. And I'm redeemed by your blood, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I receive you right now. Congratulations, my friends. You have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I congratulate you on your new life today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Nidhi. And yes, listeners, um, you won't regret asking Jesus into your life. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And it's a brand new life with him. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for for taking part in this program and, and sharing your story with us all. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for letting me, Laura. I was honoured in Jesus' name. It was such a pleasure. Your story really glorifies God. Thank you again and bye-bye. Bye, Laura. Bye-bye. Eternal Radio <laughs> The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. <laughs>